Storyline continues as the Detroit Red Wings, Pittsburgh Penguins, and Washington Capitals compete for a final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. Capitals are in play tonight, and the Red Wings and Pittsburgh Penguins are going head-to-head tonight. We'll break down those games and much more here on Puck Time, powered by Wager Talk TV. Guys, thanks for being here with us. I'm Andrew. I've got Carmine and Brian with me to break down these games. Caps, uh, Sabres, Wings, Penguins, Winnipeg Jets, and the Dallas stars as well best bets at the end of the show plenty of stuff to promote right now so many uh, great games going involved uh, going off today but also leagues we got uh, college uh, or actually nothing college we got NBA we got NHL we got MLB we got UFC on Saturday we got the Masters so lots going on here at wagertalk.com but uh, Carm your Sabres man your Sabres they uh I don't know, man. It feels like they just kind of have slowly started to get ready for the off season, but the Capitals, they continue to push. How was your night last night, Carmen? How do you feel about your Sabres tonight? My night was okay. It actually could have been better, uh, Andrew. Um, I won with, uh, you know, I won with the, and I gave it all on the show as well too. St. Louis on the puck line, uh, minus one and a half plus 110. I lose on the Eichel prop. He comes up a shot short on that one. He ends up with three. Uh, he had chances, but didn't get there. And then I had a money line parlay with Vancouver and a penalty shot. And here's the interesting thing, Andrew. And then I'm going to get right into the Sabres game. Penalty shot. Um, I always thought, and I was wrong on this one, that when there's a penalty shot, you can uh, you can pick anyone to take the penalty shot. I see Ronick at the bench uh, for Vancouver, and he's talking to uh, uh uh, Pedersen, he's talking to a couple of guys on what to do. I'm like, shit, he's got to take the penalty shot. And it's a, it, it, the guy who uh, who is hooked has to take the penalty shot. If it's a crease infraction, you can pick anybody, I believe, who's on the ice, like the coach uh, or the captain can allot someone. So uh, they miss the penalty shot, they lose in overtime, uh, Parley loses, and it's a one and two night instead of a two and one night. But a full slate of action tonight. And listen, uh, I pick games on today's show that uh, it, it's like Jenga. You're going to try and pull out a piece and hope that the piece you pull out is the winning wager because there are some games today we're going to discuss, Andrew, that are unbelievable. Sabres are 135. Washington's plus 110. Um, Washington's obviously in the playoff spot uh, at, at the moment, but so much can change by the end of the night based on not only this game, but the fact that the, the game we're going to talk about next, Pittsburgh and Detroit are playing as well, too. So there's a lot of different things that can happen at the end of tonight that are going to set up a great weekend and final week of the NHL season. Lindgren and Lukanen are the expected goals, uh, goalies in this one. The, the total sits here at six, shaded to the under 20 cents, and that's where I'm looking at. Uh, the Sabres beat them just a while back, uh, I think a week ago, 6-3 in Buffalo, but that game was a lot closer than it seemed. Washington fell apart in the third period. They allowed a power play goal, and then within the next two minutes or two and a half minutes, they allowed two more goals, and all of a sudden the Sabres are 6-3 and on their way uh, to winning that game. It was uh, it was one that the Sabres scored, the three goals they scored were uh, scored off of a generated XG number of 0.7. So, um, a little lucky, a little bad goaltending. Lindgren started that one uh, right after he allowed that third goal or that goal, uh, the, th- the third of the three goals in the third period. They, they yanked him in that game and put comfort in, in, in goal. I think the, the key here for Washington is uh, they don't want to get into a, a, a running gun with the Sabres. They're probably going to lose that if they do. Uh, it's what they've done uh, and what they did the other night. Play a good defensive game like they did against Detroit, try and make, force a team to make the mistakes. They forced Detroit to make two mistakes. They, they scored two goals while being outplayed played for two periods, and they found a way to win, even if they have to get this game to overtime. And you can look at the draws, because as far as Washington's concerned, pick up a point. Win the game, but pick up a point any way you can. Get the game to overtime, and then let the hockey gods and the overtime gods decide it. Uh, I think this is an under here. Uh, this is one of those 3-1, 3-2 games for me. Uh, absent of some power plays and uh, and some power play goals. I think this is, if you look at the, the XG number in that 6-3 game, well below what the actual goals scored in that game were. I'm leaning on the under in this one. Brian Leonard, 
always happy to have you on the show, man. Uh, you're the guy that grounds me on Thursdays <laughs> after a hyped up week. How you doing? And uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I am going to use this as my best bet, so I'm not going to talk about it. But I do want to mention something uh, you talked about. We're coming down to the end of the regular season here. You have to look a little bit deeper when you're handicapping these games. I mentioned this the other day. I have a friend that works for a different site, and he's a good handicapper. And, and he gave out a play on Vegas against Vancouver. And... It made a lot of sense and all, but I told him, I said, are you aware that Vegas wants to play Vancouver in the playoffs? And in order to do that, they would increase their chances of doing that if they'd lost to Vancouver. And he had mentioned, he goes, listen, I don't think guys throw games or anything like that. And I said, no, I, I'm not, uh, I don't think players do. But if management and coaches have anything to do with it, they will. And if you remember, Vegas had that lead in that game against Vancouver. Vancouver comes back and beats them. Well, then yesterday, Vegas goes on the road to play Edmonton. And uh, I believe four of their better players did not make the trip. That tells you the interest in winning a game like that. So keep in mind, if you're going to play, if you got a chance to maneuver yourself you're going to want to do so in order to play a team that you think you can beat. And right now, Vancouver has shown signs that uh, they're not the same team as they were earlier in the year. That is something extra we have to look at when you're handicapping these games the last week of the season. Uh, Brian, I just want to jump in because I want to talk to you about the Vegas one because we're not obviously talking mm -hmm. Vegas uh, on today's card, but, but you're a Vegas guy and you know this. So, Vegas goes in there, and that line moved. We talked about it yesterday. That line moved from like 150, the opener, to about, I saw it at 110 at one point by game time. And, you know, some guys in the comment section, both live and then later on, said uh, one player out and uh, and and uh, the Oilers are, uh, have dropped this much. No, 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 I'm taking the Oilers. And they were right. They took the Oilers, and the Oilers won. This is one of those ones where I, I look at it a couple of ways, uh, and it's it's you can tell me this going into going into the playoffs, Brian, with this Vegas team, and uh, you follow them. You're a fan. Um, they they're basically a 500 team on the road. Uh, if they have to open up in Vancouver or in Edmonton, because Edmonton is now um, they have a very good chance of winning the the Pacific, which would drop Vancouver to the number two spot. But as a Vegas fan, do you look at it that um, they're primed for a, a first or second round exit if they have to go on the road, or are you one? Of, are you, uh, do you subscribe to the fact that the Vegas Golden Knights can just rely on their sort of their, their pedigree and what they did last season, where? Um, you know the experience of going to the Stanley Cup and not and and winning it. Every team has to be looked at a little bit differently. Um, we've talked about this with Tampa in the past. Just get them to the playoffs, and once they get into the playoffs, they know what to do. I think that's the way this Vegas team is right now. Uh, have they played well? No, not really. But it's a different game when you get to the playoffs, and we've seen it so many times, which is why it's so hard for the team who wins the trophy for the most points during the regular season to continue on. We saw, you know, obviously Boston last year. It's tough to win that many games and then get to the playoffs and continue to win. It's a different ball game. So there's certain teams when you look at thinking, okay, as long as they make the playoffs, they're a veteran team, everything will work out fine. I think that's the Vegas team. Uh, as of right now, they I'm surprised they used Allen yesterday. He has not played in a while, uh, and he still hasn't looked good. And they're sit sitting here with three goalies who are pretty much interchangeable, very similar to last season, uh, going down to the wire here. And uh, it's interesting what they are doing. But uh, every team has to be taken differently. Uh, There's certain teams that uh, are just so excited to make the playoffs, and then when they get there and they lose you know, three or four straight games and they're out, uh, it's different, and you have to take a look at each individual team. Vegas is a veteran team; has been there before, done that. Um, I wouldn't give a lot of credence to anything that goes on for their final few games here before the end of the regular season. Have they clinched the playoffs? No, 
Um, they need they need to either win a game or St. Louis lose a game, and they're pretty confident they could do that um, coming down the stretch. But um, I like what they've done since the trade deadline. The guys are starting to come out and play. Um, they had one one other guy. The guy they got brought in from uh, San Jose. Uh, he played just last game. He didn't play very well last couple of games. But uh, I think um, this is a team that once they make the playoffs, they're a different team. Yeah, great info from Brian Leonard. And, and yeah, you're, I think you're discussing Hurdle. Hurdle was very good in faceoffs yeah. yesterday. At one point, he had one seven of eight. Yes. Jack Eichel, not so good. Three of uh, three of 14 at one point. Uh, not great for him. Andrew, listen, man, uh, you take the abuse from me uh, all year long on the free, you and Buster on the uh, Montreal, the free space on the bingo card. But the Buffalo Sabres, Andrew, it's the same thing. It's the Ricky Bobby. If you're not first, you're last. So uh, that's where the Sabres fit in. Uh, I'm about to miss the playoffs for, I think, the 13th year in a row. Um, the, everyone's turning on Terry Pagula, uh, the owner of the Sabres. Andrew, uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Carm, uh, as a Canadians fan, unfortunately, I've been using that if you ain't first, your last phrase for about, uh, what, uh, 26 years. So, <laughs> yeah, I love using that phrase because if you don't win at all, you, hey, what did you actually win? But, you know, guys, looking at this game, I found it kind of interesting. And, you know, I like a lot of unders today. I'll, I'll, I'll lead with that. But I look at this number here and I'm not going to lie to you. Part of me was was tempted to go against Capitals thinking, OK, how long can this team keep it going? And this is without looking at the price. And then you look at the price and you're thinking, what the hell did the Buffalo Sabres do to get this current price tag? And, and that's to me, it was kind of made me scratch my head thinking at least the Capitals are finding a way to win. And I feel like that's, we talk about the expected goals. We talk about the analytics, talk about some of these games, but when it comes down to it, sometimes you don't want to bet against a team that keeps finding a way to overcome their expected goal statistics. You know, when, when the Canadians made their big push uh, during that COVID uh, playoffs, when they beat the Leafs, the Golden Knights, the, the Winnipeg Jets, I mean, let's be real here. I would say 80% of those games, they, they were expected to lose uh, according to analytics, right? But sometimes teams are just finding a way to win. If you're a Detroit fan, you are absolutely, you know, horrified after watching their game against the Capitals because Detroit probably should have had two or three more goals, according to analytics. But this team just continues to find a way to win games, guys. So if I was betting the side, uh, there'd be only one way I'd go because it's the team that's finding a way. Although they had a small little losing streak there, that last game against Detroit is a perfect indicator as kind of what's been going on with the Capitals lately. But as I keep on saying, these playoff games, and it continues to work well for me here, guys, the playoff games, the teams that are just doing anything to get a point, they're going under the total. And uh, we're looking at this with the Capitals right now. They're relying on a few guys, as I keep on saying, every time this team plays, a few guys to do all the scoring, a hot goaltender, and the defensemen are staying back. If you notice, you watch these games for the Capitals. Defensemen are not jumping into the rush whatsoever. They're staying back, staying at home, protecting their own end, and they're scoring two or three goals. And you look back, guys, even when they were on their winning streak, sure, there were some games where they scored three or four goals. I'm not going to deny that. But still, a large part of their success was their defense and not just outscoring teams first to four, first to five wins. So I'm going to go with the under in this game and hope we can get uh, a defensive battle between two teams that uh, are trying to end this season off on a good note or potentially, of course, make the playoffs. Looks like we have a question uh, coming in here uh, live on the YouTube shorts. Um, we have Bob uh, looking at a three-team parlay or, th or three wins and a push uh, yesterday. Great stuff. We got a super chat tip. Uh, didn't even know we get those on YouTube shorts. So uh, thank you to Bob. I think it is Rauscher. Uh, that's the last name, Bob. So thank you so much. Tuning in live on the YouTube shorts. It was a good day yesterday uh, for us yesterday. Carm on the show, man. I'm telling you, when we have some of these days where it's only a few games, I thought we did pretty well. You know, we got some props going. We got some sides and totals between you and I. So thank you so much for being here with us, Bob. And uh, thank you for the tip. Uh, we really do appreciate that. 
let's keep things uh, moving along. Uh, if we're ready to go here, guys, on game number two, we'll discuss the Red Wings and the Pittsburgh Penguins. And, Brian, you know which team I'm cheering for as a fan in this matchup. But, hey, we got to keep our fandom uh, away from things here. We're seeing a uh, little bit of a favorite spot now for this Pittsburgh Penguins team, a spot they haven't really been in as much lately. And total is at six. What are your thoughts on this one? I We've been doing this show all year long, and I don't know how many times we have written off certain teams, the Islanders, the, the Detroit, Pittsburgh, Washington. I mean, the whole time, nobody's out. It's, this league is so tough to win in. Every team has a chance to win any single night. And uh, we've got two teams here that uh, I don't. I wasn't expecting either one of them to make it back to uh, this situation they're in. But Pittsburgh's won six of the last 10 meetings, three of five at home. Interesting, only two of the last nine meetings were wins by a single goal. So uh, we've seen a, a good share of blowouts in this series. Uh, both teams tied to 84 points with four games to go. Just one point behind Washington for the second wild card. So this should be in a very intense contest. Uh, when looking at the last 10 games in five on five play, we clearly see that Pittsburgh's been playing the better hockey. Goal share of 60.42, expected goals 51.5. Detroit comes in at 46.88 gold share and 44.57 expected goals. After this contest, the Red Wings finish the season at Toronto then a home and home against your Canadians. Uh, Pittsburgh hosts Boston and Nashville while traveling to the New York Islanders. So it's clear the Penguins have the tougher road to the playoffs. So I expect an all out effort here for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's playing the better hockey. They need this game. This is twice as much as important to Pittsburgh as this to Detroit based on what they've got left. Uh, nobody wants to be having to play Boston and Nashville and the Islanders um going down the stretch so give me pittsburgh in this one i think this is a, a solid line on two teams that i'm really happy to see are still battling for playoff spots but who would have thought i'm on the pittsburgh penguins trying to fight for the playoffs here here they are and uh coming off a game that was quite tough as we discussed it uh carm and i looked at it and and mike sullivan came out and said that crosby didn't start in overtime against the leafs because he had a skate issue uh, imagine that ends up being the reason this team doesn't make the playoffs because they they had to start Logan O'Connor and Lars Eller in overtime instead of Malkin and Crosby. Uh, quite a difference in those players, but Brian looking towards the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins to get the job done in a game that's uh, this is what we want here, guys. I mean, in the hockey world right now, you want games that are meaningful, and this is about as big as it gets for tonight's board as far as meaningful games. Carmen, you've been mentioning a lot about seedings and home ice for other teams, but this isn't about home ice. This is about literally making their way into the playoffs. What are your thoughts here in this one? Uh, before I get to this, I'm going to uh, quickly answer uh, an Instagram. Um, I think it's an Instagram uh, question from GT about uh, my 5% play tonight. I only have the one package up, which is the 5% play, but what I'm going to do in that 5% play under the analysis, I'm going to list uh, my other two client plays that I have on tonight's card. So I'm not going to sell those ones as a second additional package. So you'll know what my three plays are um, if you're buying the 5% play that I have up in the NHL tonight. And you can use the coupon CARM10 to get $10 off that play as well too. If you guys are still looking for that 188 package for the rest of the regular season and the NHL playoffs, you go to the deal section over at Wager Talk, click there, and you'll see NBA or NHL uh, rest of the season playoffs, and you can click on it and then find the capper you want, and I think it sets it up for you, or message Melissa at support at wagertalk.com. Now, to get back to this one, Andrew, I put these games on there, and I, I, listen, you guys in the live chat, you guys in the video afterwards, um, I have no problem with you guys saying you don't like our opinion on this game or you don't like where we're going on this other game because these these are tough games today. I put these on for a reason because there are playoff seedings, playoff spots, so we have to discuss them. Uh, nobody wants to talk about the Seattle Kraken and Anaheim Ducks right now. They want to talk about these teams. Brian mentioned you know the, the Detroit schedule and the Pittsburgh schedule to close out. Uh, you look at this, and 
it's not a handicapping tool, but this is a must win for both teams. The The Pittsburgh Penguins have to win this game. And I'll, I'll explain why both teams have to win this game. I have to win this game, stay ahead of Detroit, possibly leapfrog over the, um, the Washington Capitals uh, when we know what happens to the Capitals tonight or we see what happens to the Capitals tonight because they have some tough games to go. There's no freebies on their card. Uh, the Islanders um, on that final game of the season are a team that's trying to hold on to a, a playoff spot as well, despite having won five straight. Detroit, Andrew, I got to bring up the free space on the bingo card again. Listen, uh, Detroit plays uh, this one tonight. Uh, it's a must win for them, but this is one where if they win this game tonight, they got to be favorites to make the playoffs because uh, the game in Toronto is a toughie. But then they back to back against Montreal and the Canadians always play tough. It's the last couple of games of the season. The Canadians are always a scrappy team, but Detroit's going to be favored in both games, uh, home and away. They're, they're going to be favorites. Detroit on 84 points. If they finish with 90 points, I think 90 is enough to get into the playoffs at this point, the way this is going. So three out of four gets them there, but one of the three out of four has to be tonight against them. The problem here is, as good as uh, Alex Lyon was, and I said he's been playing well, Detroit made two mistakes in the first two periods in which they completely outplayed the Washington Capitals and they allowed two goals. They were down 2 nothing. You can't make the mistakes that they made and win games. Uh, forget about the final goal. It was with one second left for Detroit, so it doesn't really matter. The final score was really 2 nothing, as far as I'm concerned. Pittsburgh, Nadalkovic's been good. Um, you look at the XG numbers when these teams played and Pittsburgh beat them 6-3, to three, pretty much lined up with the, what the final score was, 4.77 to 2.66. One empty netter for Pittsburgh. They kind of ruled that one out. The thing here is that, uh, and Johnny Detroit, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, man, but um, one in nine, their last 10 games on the road for Detroit. How do you back a team that is one in nine in their last 10 games on the road? It's got to be Pittsburgh. Uh, I hate laying a dollar forty-five, but I think I have to in this spot. I'm going to take Pittsburgh minus one forty-five, and that's from a guy who's got Detroit to make the playoffs as a uh, as as a prop futures bet. Um, it pains me to do it, but I'm taking the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight minus one forty-five. The Pittsburgh Penguins at home, and yeah, that's the thing, Carm, is that 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 Detroit team that that you get the home and road splits and take those into account. So the fact that the analytical people would say, you know what, they deserve to win that game against Washington. You know, Washington's goaltender played very well. This should have been a game Detroit win. Now they go on the road, play another team fighting for a playoff spot. And although Pittsburgh got the point against Toronto guys, I don't think they're going to be happy about that game. I really don't. Uh, it wasn't their best uh, they were 0 for 5 on the power play. They were given a ton of chances, 1 for 2 on the PK. And uh, that does scare me, of course, as somebody looking to bet the under tonight, guys. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's been a theme working for me very well uh, lately on the show. And I've been taking a look at some of these teams. And I understand you've got one team going under quite a bit. Detroit 5 of the last 6 against one team going over quite a bit. Pittsburgh 4 of the last 6. But when I look at this matchup as a whole, defense is going to be huge. Although one player prop that stuck out to me that continues to do well uh, is Chris Letang uh, getting a point. Guys, you know it, something's going on this year with Chris Letang when you're getting minus 110 for the guy to get a point. He's got one in seven of his last 10 games. They haven't even changed the odds on him. You know, you've got Carlson, you've got Malkin, Rust, Crosby, all these guys with these high prices. But as you guys know, I love the defenseman props. I think I told that to Buster on Tuesday. Um, I really do like looking at these defenseman props. Minus 110 is a great price. But when I look at Detroit, I think they realized and they learned a hard lesson last time out that it's going to be defense that wins them the game because th those types of games are, are really what's going to happen to them right now. If you can't score, if you're having trouble scoring, you run into a hot goaltender, you have to protect their own end of the ice. And as we saw, Yes, or last time in Pittsburgh played, guys. They were down 2-1. They scored that goal. I don't know about you guys, but that was pretty much a sure thing it was going to overtime after Pittsburgh tied it up. I mean, I'm not saying they didn't try to score, but whether there were six minutes to go or there were 16 minutes to go, that game was going to overtime tied 2-2. 
because how important a point is for these two teams. So I'm going to go under six guys. And the best part is you're getting a plus price on this. You know, a lot of times you take these totals lately, you're getting the minus 125, 120. We're getting a plus 105 price on the under Red Wings and Penguins. Huge playoff implications in this one. You got to love it. And I'm looking towards the under. And we got the guys looking towards the home team as Detroit has certainly struggled when playing on the road. Guys, whether you're watching on YouTube, YouTube Shorts live on your mobile devices, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you're watching, please do us a favor here. Share the video. Uh, hit the like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, as we continue to grow uh, the great products here at Wager Talk. All kinds of great videos being posted every single day. All right. Let's, uh, let's keep things going. If you don't have anything more to add here, Carm. Yeah, just a, a quick one, because I was answering uh, TJ, two questions from TJ, uh, or a question and a comment. So he's like, uh, one of them was, and TJ is a great guy in our, in our chat, he's always there. He's like, don't try and justify um, your your opinions if people don't like them, um, uh, that's on them or something like that. But my point is, uh, I think I was trying to make is, uh, I'm not going to pat myself on the back if if the opinion of today shall go 3-0, and because they could easily go 0-3. These games are coin flips. They really seem like coin flips to me, the games we're discussing today, and can go either way. But you, we have to discuss them. And then the second one, Andrew, is, uh, and, I, and Brian, uh, this is a quick one. You guys can tell me your thoughts. If, if your team is awarded a penalty shot, would you like the option of, uh, foregoing the penalty shots and taking a two-minute power play instead. Where the coach can say, I want a two-minute power play instead. Would you like that rule in there? I, I'll I go. Have you to, go, Brian. You go. Yeah, I, I would have you to go. look at the numbers. I have no idea at this point. I'm all a numbers guy. So whichever gives me the better chance of winning, that's what I'm going to go for. And without having those numbers, I don't want to speak on in that on, on that topic. Okay. Well, I, I think it's really cool the way it works that the guy that got that got hooked or tripped has to take the shot. So, I mean, if they were to change that rule that gave you the option, Carm, the guy that, you know, you needed to, to get his uh, penalty shot in yesterday, they probably would have said, no way, no way we're letting you shoot. We'll take the power play, right? So that would make it kind of funny. But uh, you can only see the look on these guys' faces when the coach tells them, sorry, you know, you're not taking the penalty shot. But that's what makes it cool is that a lot of times it's it works out to be the, the non-all-star players that get it. And I know, Carm, you're used to soccer betting as well where, you know, and, and, you know, I've gotten more into the sport with covering a local team here where I live. And, you know, you see a guy work so hard to create a play. He gets tripped inside the box and then he's not the guy to take it. Somebody else says good work, but uh, hey, you don't get to take that shot. So different, but then two sports. But I would say it's mostly one of those things where if it was if it was a good player, then you take it. If it's not a great player, highly skilled, then you probably go ahead and just hit the pass button and take the power play. Uh, some of these teams are so talented yeah. out there on the power play, Carm. So what I, What do you think? I, I mean, I like I the know. option. I like the option. I like the option because if it's the fourth line out there um, and some of these guys have hands of stone, I don't want them taking a penalty shot. Like he came in and basically faked a slap shot. And then by the time he, he got control of the puck, he, he had no shot of scoring there. Would have been completely different with one of the top, uh, uh, one of the guys on the top two lines. But one other thing, Andrew, because Ralph Michaels, Stat Daddy, gave me this stat this morning. So I, I have to discuss it real quick. Uh, yesterday, Vancouver wins. Uh, sorry, Vancouver loses at home to Arizona. Arizona gets less than 20 shots on goal. So when you're on the losing end of these ones and you, you look at the team, you're like, how do we lose a game in which the other team had didn't even have 20 shots on goal? Ralph ran the report for me. 109 games this year um where a team uh um 43 of 109 games where a team uh was held under 20 uh, 20 shots on goal 20 or less 43 of those teams went on to win including arizona so it it happens quite often that's uh that's um about what 41 percent of the time a team under 20 shots on goal has gone on to win a game it's it's an infantable well and andrew i don't know how it happens but it seems uh it seems to happen to me. I, I, I lose a game where I'm like, 
these guys had like 16 shots on goal. How did they lose this game? Because they win 2-1 or 3-2. Or, anyways, that's just the old man in the pitching. But thanks to Ralph Michaels for making me feel a little bit better. Old man yelling at the cloud. The Simpsons meme. The yes, Simpsons. Me. <laughs> I agree with you, though, Carmen. It's weird when it's weird when the teams get a lot of shots or not that many and they end up winning the game, eh, Brian? Yeah, I've seen a lot of times where an underdog has gotten off to a two or three goal lead in the game and they've taken four or five shots. At that point, all you're doing is dumping it in and playing defense. Um, so I, I think I would want to know how many shots are taken in each period. I think that would tell you a little bit more. Uh, so if a team has got the lead going into the third period, they're not going to take many shots. So I, you got to look into the information a little bit. It'll break it down a little bit more. But, yeah, anytime you've got an underdog that's got a two- or three-goal lead, I, you know what each team is going to do. The, the team behind has got the more talent. They're going to be shooting like crazy. And you, see, you end up with one team's got 50 and one's got 20, and you wonder why you lost the game with the 50. That's just the way hockey is. Well, guys, I haven't been able to pat myself on the back very much this season, so I'm going to for yesterday. I had the Blues. My only client play yesterday was Blues' first period puck line, and uh, I took them four shots to get four goals. And that was a great feeling. Like, that was a nice feeling. It's I hadn't had one of those in a while, guys, so I really needed one of those, and so that was really nice to start the game off. Four shots Mar- and four goals. <laughs> Mrazic, man, Andrew. We talked about him on the show, Mrazic is a winning record for Chicago as a goalie, but at home. And then on the road, he's uh, uh, not so, he hasn't done so well. And man, uh, I think his, if I remember correctly, and I had it written down here, Mrazic splits 4-18-1 and one on the road, allowing 1.4 goals more per game. He allowed three shots, three goals on the first three shots of the game. Unbelievable. And they pulled him at that, at that point and they brought in, Soderbloom, who then uh, proceeded to allow uh, a goal on his, his first shot. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say your first period was pretty much locked in at that point, Andrew. Those are always nice. I've met. It's always funny when you pull the goalie and the guy that comes in plays even worse. <laughs> They're just like, well, what do I do now? Who Who's supposed to go in there? Carm, let's jump into Dallas and Winnipeg, man. This is going to be a good one. Dallas is playing some great hockey. Uh, they're a team that people should watch out for, and people will definitely not want their team to be playing in the postseason. Minus 150, I'm seeing for the consensus number for the favorite. Total at six, but shaded towards the under here. What do you think about this spot here, Carm? Do you think Dallas continues to play well? Uh, I, I do. Uh, Andrew, this one falls into the category. Some of you guys in the chat absolutely uh, love taking draws. This one falls into one of the ones where it could very well be a draw between these two teams, a game that goes to overtime, and then someone gets the points. Uh, suddenly, the Jets, uh, who start, were looking a little dead in the water, have won four straight games, which has got to make Andrew feel good because he's got some futures on the Winnipeg Jets. But not only that, they have a game in hand on Colorado now. So uh, Winnipeg has four games left, Colorado has three. If the Jets were to somehow win tonight, whether it's regulation, whether it is in OT, um, they tie the Avalanche for the number two spot in the Central, but actually jump over them because of the fact that they have 42 regulation wins right now to 41 for Colorado. And then these two teams are actually going to play, uh, I believe, in a couple days. So uh, that, that'll be a big one to decide uh, home ice. I think home ice means a lot more to Winnipeg than it does to Colorado. I think Colorado's built that they can win on the road. So it's an interesting one from, from that viewpoint. And you look at Dallas. Dallas is still trying to get the number one seed overall, but they're in the driver's seat. Uh, and then number one, uh, as far as the President's Trophy, um, with the with the Rangers having lost, uh, they're right in the mix again, one point back of them, and in the mix uh, for that President's Trophy. I'm not sure if that's as important to them, but the number one seed in the West definitely is. This one's a good one. I'm leaning the, uh, the under in this one, Andrew. I don't see a lot of goals in this one. I think it's going to be a tight affair, one that could end up going to overtime. So I, I know totals are very um, uh, they're very tough this late in the season, but 
you have to look at totals in games that have meaning. And this is, and all of tonight's games have some meaning to them. I don't want to take totals between teams that uh, are not making the playoffs, have no shot at making the playoffs, and are basically uh, playing pond hockey at this point. Uh, give me the under in this one. It's at six right now. I'm comfortable taking the six and the under. Brian? It's interesting you say that about pond hockey. Um, I've always used this in the NFL. When you get two teams who are out of the playoffs near the end of the season, I play the overs in those games. Um, I would look for overs in games involving two teams that are out of the playoffs, trying to uh, stack their stats a little bit. Uh, this is a tough handicap for me. Um, Dallas has won seven of the last ten games between these two, including two of three at home. Star Center is a hotter team, winning nine of ten games with the Jet Center play at four, five, and one their last ten. When you look at the last 10 on 5 on 5 play, that's been proven out as you take a look at Dallas, 62.79 goal share with an expected goals of 59.37. Winnipeg comes in less than 50% on both at 48.84 goal share, 49.97 expected goals. When we look at the rest of the regular season for these two teams, we see Dallas finishes the season with home games against Seattle and St. Louis. Seattle, a team that's long been out of the playoff race. St. Louis, a team that is basically one win from Vegas or one loss from St. Louis, and they're out. So Dallas has got a pretty easy schedule after this one. Uh, so this is the game they're going to want um, and set themselves up for tra possibly trying to get the best record in the league. Uh, the Jets finish on a four-game trip. Uh, it, they play Colorado on Saturday, and then they host Seattle and Vancouver. At that point, Vancouver may not need the game either. But these are two teams that – I think are really live once you get to the playoffs. I like the way they play. They play good defense. Uh, Dallas has played a little bit more offense this year. Uh, two teams I'm looking to bet on, and I'll be honest with you right now, when we get to the playoffs, since so many teams are so close, at least in talent, in my opinion, I'm going to be taking some underdogs to win some of these series, and I think that's the way to play the NHL playoffs on a yearly basis. But this year, there's, there's really no team that I can go in and say, this is the team to beat. A lot of good teams, a lot of pretty good teams. Can't wait for this playoffs to start, but I'm not seeing any value here. I prefer the Dallas side, but I don't want to lay the 150, so I'll be sitting this one out. Brian, I feel like a lot of times uh, my my battle, my inner battle uh, is is volume, right? And I feel like in the playoffs this year, it's going to be really about picking your spots overall. I mean, mm -hmm. this is going to be – the type of scenario where I, I, don't, I don't think you want to be heavily involved, you know, and if you are, you want to be, you know, watching that bankroll and avoiding the favorites, as you mentioned, right? I mean, it could be very well, we could have four games on tap in the NHL and three out of four dogs could hit no problem would not surprise anybody. And uh, that's going to be something to watch out for uh, come playoff time here uh, as we move forward in the NHL guys, when it comes down to it here, we talked about it a lot this season about the overs for the Dallas Stars at home versus on the road. One trend, and I'm, I don't have the exact stats for you, but I'm going to get even more specific for you guys here because uh, I hopefully the viewer the, the viewers and listeners can, can take note of this, uh, and I'll try and get the exact notes for you. Second period overs have been the big cash cow uh, for this Dallas Cow uh, Cowboys. Dallas Stars team, uh, and not just at, at home, but on the road as well. But the second period has been the major period for them. We're having all their success. And guys, the best part is if you get a one nothing after one and you wait maybe three or four minutes into the second period, you can bet that second period over. But overall, I've actually decided I'm going to lock in the underdog in this one here, the Winnipeg Jets. Just looking at their games lately, they went through a couple games where they played really well. You know, they pick up Monaghan, they pick up Toffoli, and then they stop playing like themselves. This is a team that got caught up in playing, I would say, too much of a back-and-forth style of hockey. They weren't playing Winnipeg Jets hockey. They were losing to teams that they shouldn't be losing to like the Ottawa senators, but all of a sudden they knocked down the LA Kings. They knocked down the predators. They knocked down the Minnesota wild. What's the common denominator. It's defense in that one. So um, I, I do agree with Carm uh, with the under there. I, I probably will still look towards that second period over because the trend has been unbelievable all season if I can get it. But for the way this Winnipeg team is playing right now, I have no choice, but to lock in the underdog as their scoring goals 
but they're certainly playing well defensively, not giving up more than two goals in a handful of games right now, Carm. Uh, yeah, Andrew, uh, you know, a couple things to, to sort of discuss, uh, you know, when we talk about like the Dallas, the Dallas overs, it was a moneymaker early on in the season and for most of the season. Um, but then it started to level out, uh, you know, at one point it was like 22, I think it was 22 and six, uh, 22 and six, 22 and seven. Um, it on the season, 25 and 13, uh, are the Dallas overs at home. Um, but. Their last 10 games, seven of the 10 games have gone under the total because we're nearing the end of the season. Teams are starting to tighten it up and Dallas are playing more of the Dallas Stars hockey that we're accustomed to. You know, uh, all three games between these two teams have stayed under the total. I think five is the highest goal count thus far between these teams. And Andrew, uh, just quickly, you were talking about second period. Uh, was it second period totals or second period um, yeah, second period over one and a half. Now. Second period over one and okay, a half so for the Dallas Stars. Second period over one and a half for the Dallas Stars. Thirty, the Dallas Stars um, overs in the second period this season are thirty-nine and nineteen, plus ten point five five units or a nine point six five ROI. Uh, that's wow. overall on the season. So wow, there you some go. great numbers. Um, at, at home, yeah, at home, 17 and 10 uh, to that number. So I'm um, just give you a little bit of data uh, on that. Uh, we usually have uh, Chris Otto, who does very good stuff. He's usually in the chat every once in a while, and I'm sure he has those numbers as well, too. Uh, I'm getting mine in case you guys ask from uh, EV Analytics, which you can search online, and they've got some great, easy-to-navigate tools to check totals, spreads, Money lines, first period, second period, third period, money lines, totals, um, and you just go through them. And sometimes you'll find a gem uh, in there. Sometimes, sometimes you'll find a couple of turds as well too. But uh, we'll go with the gems on this one. Brian, I'm going to go to you first on this one. I think we've all have opinions on this game, Andrew. Already, uh, give tell us, let us know what you have up at Wager Talk, and uh, give us the show best bet. Yeah, my show best bet will be coming up in just a minute. It's a game we spoke about earlier. Uh, it's the only game I gave to clients today. Uh, it's a tough card for me. Uh, baseball, we've got a lot of day games, but a lot of them are in danger of being rained out. Last thing you want to do is put in all that work on a, on a game and it gets rained out. So uh, just the one play for clients. Uh, no need to buy it. This is it right here. I'm going to take a look at the Washington and Buffalo game. You know, the Capitals have won six of uh, ten meetings, three of five on the road. Five of the last seven meetings have been decided by a single goal between these two. Uh, the Capitals have won at Detroit in the pivotal wildcard matchup, while Buffalo is basically just playing out spoiler role at this point. Capitals are clinging to the last playoff spot despite having a minus 40 net goal performance on the season. Uh, this is a team who probably doesn't deserve to be in the playoffs, but neither do the Islanders, who I think are like a minus 26 or 21 or something like that. So we've got two teams that have found ways to win. They put themselves in that position. And you kind of talked about that earlier, Carmine, when you're talking about Washington finding ways to win. Um, over the last 10 games on 5-5 five and five play, Washington only has a 43.59 goal share, 44.58 expected goal mark. Buffalo doesn't come in any better at 43.19, excuse me, it's a goal share and 44.26 in expected goals. So after this contest, the Capitals will host Tampa Bay and Boston while ending the season on the road at Philadelphia in the second game of a back-to-back -back situation. I know Philadelphia is basically thrown in the towel here, but to be able to, to have to win back-to-back -back games in the second game on the road is really tough for Washington. So I think this all comes down to a need situation for Washington. Uh, Buffalo, on the other hand, finishes the year at Florida and Tampa Bay. Two games I'll probably be a sizable underdog in. And but uh, I consider this game near of a pick'em contest. Uh, Andrew talked about this line earlier. Why is Buffalo in the 135 range? I don't understand. Uh, they're not playing well enough to be that be in that range. And Washington finds ways to win. I'll take the plus money here with the Capitals on a game that, like I said, we're getting plus 115 here. And it's a situation where I just don't think that Buffalo is, should be favored in that range. I'll take Washington. 
I like it. Let's cash an underdog ticket tonight there, Brian. I don't get that price either. Best of luck to you and all your clients on all your plays across the board tonight. Wagertalk.com. Brian Leonard. Shout out to Bob. Uh, Bob Rauscher again. He said he looks at team totals as well, just like myself. And he has been looking at unders with team totals. And the Blackhawks under two and a half. He's been cashing big time on that for a while. So, Bob, keep on doing it, man. If it's working, uh, keep riding that for the rest of the season as I know I fall victim to talking a lot about these overs uh, as far as the team totals. But Bob is narrowed in on the on the Blackhawks under. And, man, their scoring struggles continue. So great stuff there from him. Uh, we have another one here. Uh, it's a poll question. Guys, make sure you vote uh, below here on the YouTube shorts. Uh, we want to get all your votes on YouTube as well. Um, NHL underdog, you would bet on to win outright tonight. Which one would you select? We got Detroit. Uh, we have the Devils versus the Leafs. Capitals versus Buffalo. Winnipeg versus Dallas. Right now, the leader in that category, the leader in the poll, we have Detroit. And then that we have Winnipeg. And then we have Washington and the Devils. So it sounds like people are the most confident in Toronto as a favorite, but guys cast your vote in the poll. You want to know what you guys think Sounds like Washington, Winnipeg, Detroit, the only one they're not confident in the New Jersey devils guys, make sure you vote Carm. You've got a big play going today. You also have a promo code for us. Tell us about that. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, even though I gave out uh, my lean is Pittsburgh uh, in the poll, I'm going to vote for Detroit because uh, we have a fantastic Detroit office and they came up with the code CARM10. So CARM10 gets you $10 off that uh, 5% play up tonight. Uh, we cashed six of the last seven of them. Uh, and guys, if you're picking that one up, check the analysis section below the play. I am going to have uh, any other games that I have listed at Wager Talk, so their actual client plays, they'll be in there written up as um, other plays, uh, uh, so you get them because they won't be up for sale. So I want to make sure you guys get uh, any other plays that I have listed for clients as well. Uh, Andrew, my show best bet. I'm going to go to the last game of the night. The LA Kings will clinch a playoff spot with a win tonight at home. I'm going to get them to do it in regulation. They're minus 130 against the Calgary Flames. Yeah, the Calgary Flames come off a huge victory in overtime against the San Jose Sharks on the road. Prior to that, they lost six straight games on the road, all in regulation. Kings are playing some uh, some unbelievable hockey at the moment. Uh, I think five straight wins or six straight wins at home by a 30 to 10 margin. Um, they're priming up for the playoffs right now. So I'm gonna take the LA Kings in regulation to win as your show best bet. Guys, I'm going to have the final six in 60 of the season uh, tomorrow, but I will not be on the show tomorrow. Um, I'm getting poked and prodded all day long at the doctors and at the hospital. So Brian Leonard is jumping into my seat. Uh, he's such a great guy. He's, uh, he's not starting his three-day weekend. He's going to be here, Brian. Really appreciate it. Uh, but I will have the six and 60 recorded for you today, and it'll be on the show for tomorrow. Uh, back to you, Andrew. All right, best luck on that big play tonight, man. Go get it. You've been on a hot run with those big plays, guys. Make sure you join Carmine. Uh, and if you're not joining him on that play, $188 works for the NHL. Uh, get all of his plays. Same thing for Brian. Same thing for myself. I'm off a nice winner. Uh, one and done. No, I'm not LeBron James' son. But, uh, well, that's what we were last night. One and done. Uh, St. Louis Blues getting the job done in the first period. And uh, that's going to be the story for me tonight. One and done, hopefully. Might add one more play, but I'm trying to be sharp, trying to pick a few spots I like and stick to those. And speaking of which, one best bet, a 4% play in the MLB for today on a long-term 63% run. Uh, with the N MLB totals. And yesterday was a good day as well. Uh, went two and one and three, two percent plays yesterday. So far today, just one four percent play. So looking forward uh, to catch some tickets today here, guys. And uh, in the NHL, I'm going to rock with the under in the Pittsburgh and Detroit game. I mentioned the playoff field this game will have. How important getting one point at least is for both these teams. And uh, looking at the secondary scoring, it's not been there for either team. It's the top guys. Shut those guys down, and we see a low-scoring game. I believe we will definitely see that. Two goaltenders playing some pretty good hockey as well. We'll go under six at a nice price 
of plus 105. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time right here on Puck Time.